Have you ever wanted to play Paper Luigi? Well, this video is probably the closest you'll ever get to that. Now let's roll with some bosses, starting with Red and Blue Goomba. With only 10 HP though, this fight would be extremely problematic for us because we would absolutely require a close call to activate at least a few times to be able to win. And if I can help it, I don't want to have to worry about RNG. So I spent some time to grind at the level 3 to get myself 20 HP max. With 20 HP, Mario does take a lot of damage still, yes, but he's able to survive for long enough for Luigi to finish the two off. And not too much later, we also fight the Goomba King himself. By no means a difficult fight. Jump on the tree, KO the red and blue Goomba right away. And from there, you're repeatedly jumping at the Goomba King until he goes down. So far, so good. And just note that, at least up until Chapter 2, Luigi and Goombario have basically identical movesets. Except for like one difference between, say, Goombario's head bonk and Luigi's jump attack. But that won't become apparent until we get to the Koopa Bros Fortress. But before Chapter 1, there's a magic loop that we must defeat, though this is not a tough fight. Mario already has plenty of HP, and it takes 4 jumps minimum if you get the Astro Command every single time. Which I do, and that's that. Chapter 1 has quite a few fights, and unfortunately for Luigi, the fact that he isn't really different from Goombario really does not serve him very well here at all. A lot of the later fights especially demand that you have at least some way of getting around defense. And admittedly, the first few fights aren't that bad. The Fuzzies only have 3 HP and 1 attack power, but also 0 defense. For Luigi, that's 8 turns total of using your jump attack on them. Whether or not you block their suction attack, you'll be fine. Just beat them all up and be on your way. Koopa Bros Fortress, however, is a little more ominous. Now, any fights versus Koopa Troopas and Bob Bombs, Luigi can handle just fine. Though, as it turns out, unlike Goombario, the second jump from Luigi cannot instantly flip over paratroopas. For Goombario, if you hit back a Koopa Troopa that's airborne, it will not only fall to the ground, but also fall on its back. With Luigi, however, it will fall to the ground, but it still stays on its feet until your next jump attack, which will flip them over. So that's just the slightest bit more inconvenient. Meanwhile, bob -Omas behave very differently. With a partner like Goombario, his head bonk will set them off, but only the second hit will if you land the second hit. But Goombario is still safe after the first. With Luigi, however, after the first jump, if Luigi falls back on top of the bob -Omb, it will detonate immediately, stunning Luigi for a whole turn. The TLDR is that the game punishes you for being good at it. Still, at least both of those fights are entirely possible for Luigi to do on his own. Unlike the Bullet Bill Blasters, aka the only way through the Koopa Bros Fortress. Luigi can only jump right now, and his jump does only one damage, while the Bullet Bill Blasters have one defense. So he simply cannot hurt them at all. Kind of a shame actually, Luigi can't beat the game all by himself. Though to be fair, if Luigi can't do it, I can't imagine any other partner being able to do it either, right? Right? Oh, just you wait until we get to see what. Meanwhile, there's the Koopa Bros and the Trojan Bowser, which neither of them can be attacked by Luigi at all. The Trojan Bowser, just like the Bill Blasters, has one defense point, and Luigi's jump again only does one damage. One minus one equals zero, and as a result, Luigi cannot get anywhere here at all. Moreover, the way the Koopa Bros are designed, you absolutely need a weakness to be able to do any damage to them, or else you're just completely stuck. I would have Mario help out here by using a Thunderbolt, but... Luigi can't even reach the Koopa Bros, so it doesn't really matter here. Real shame too. Imagine if instead of Tato, Luigi had his Thunder Hand from Mario and Luigi. That'd be really cool. But things don't get any better from this point forward, at least not until we get the Junior Troopa, which is probably the last boss that will give Luigi any real trouble. In this fight, the gimmick is that Junior Troopa has defense. I think I've said enough. Yeah, scoring in Chapter 1 is really hard. Most of the chapter gatekeeps anyone that doesn't have more than one attack power. But at least the worst of them all is over now. For now, we have begun Chapter 2, the Dry Dry Desert and the Dry Dry Ruins. But before both of those, there's this buzzer who says that we cannot get past unless we are not Mario. And well, as it turns out, we just so happen to have Luigi right here in the flesh. So when I say I'm Luigi, I really mean it when I say I'm Luigi. Haha! <laughs> Honesty 100! Anyway, at this point in the challenge, I'm trying to avoid as many enemies as possible because Luigi just cannot handle most of them. Spiky enemies suck for Luigi, okay? At least until we get to the Oasis and we find our first super block, and we get the move Quake Hammer. Yes, I am not kidding when I say it, Quake Hammer. Luigi had a hammer this entire freaking time, or I guess he just managed to materialize it after getting the super block. And get this, it's not just your standard Quake Hammer either. No, Quake Hammer does two damage with a single hit. 
This is more of a power quake, doing 4 damage to all enemies that are either on the ground or on the ceiling. But more importantly right now, and for when we fight Bowser, Luigi's jump does 2 damage, not just 1 per hit. Which in effect makes this fight last half as long. And aside from the occasional times you get hit by gusts of wind that knock Luigi off for a turn, truth is this fight was just really easy. By the way, before this fight, I actually said that I was Princess Peach. I thought it was fitting because Luigi likes dressing up in dresses. I mean, have you played Luigi's Mansion? I should also mention that I went to challenge the dojo. Obviously Chen would be easy because jumping on him keeps him from actually being able to attack Mario. Though Quick Hammer does do more damage since it ignores defense. On the other hand, it costs FP and Mario actually takes damage at the end of the turn too. Either way, it doesn't really matter. And then there's Lee, who reluctantly I cannot beat yet. His damage output is just a little too much for me right now. And I have very little experience with guarding Goombario's head bonk, so uh, this is already extremely trippy looking. Let's come back to this later. Now, Dry Drive Ruins is actually a very easy area for Luigi to clear. Literally everything in here is one shot by Quake Hammer. For a prime example of this, let's look at the tomb where we get trapped with three Poke Mummies. These enemies have only 4 HP max, and same with the swoops as well, only having 4 HP max. But what really sweetens the deal is the fact that they're all also on the ground or on the ceiling. So after just three Quake Hammers, Luigi's already done here. It's the same situation with the Stone Chomps. Thanks to Quake Hammer, enemies can no longer bully Luigi's damage up with defense. And it only takes a single Quake Hammer to take them out. And funny enough, the same can be said for Tutten Koopa's fight. Now, Tutten Koopa himself has 30 HP max, but sometimes he'll summon Chomps. And Chomps have 3 defense, but again, only 4 HP. So the instant a Chomp is summoned, it's already dead. And to fight otherwise, it's as easy as ever. Keep using your jump, keep cool and collected whenever the spell is used against you. Which, by the way, why does it look like Luigi's doing a spring jump animation here? And eventually you win! And that's the end of Chapter 2. So, speaking of Luigi's Mansion and, well, haunted areas... Now there's Forever Forest, and it's funny to think about the fact that Luigi's envious about the fact that we're going on an adventure without him, but I cannot imagine the real Luigi really wanting to be in a forest that is this deep, dark, and scary, and has literal ghosts haunting it. Still, leave it to Luigi, facing his fears head on, and redefining gender norms one step at a time. Now, the next fight of note is against Junior Troopa, but before we fight him, we get access to live streams being purchased now. Partners cannot use items in battle, even if it's Luigi, so I'm going to be stocking up on a bunch of these throughout the entire adventure. In my mind, this challenge is more of a challenge to see which bosses can actually be hurt by partners, rather than which partners can actually be bosses in a reasonable amount of time. So Junior Troopa still has his defense, but he's also no airborne. Unfortunate timing because it means we can't use Quick Hammer and we have to put up with his one defense point now. However, Luigi now has two attack power, not just one. So at the bare minimum, he can at least hurt Junior Troopa. Even then, it does not feel good to do only two damage per turn. And rest assured, those live streams did come in handy. Because this fight easily lasted roughly 20 turns. But a boss is a boss is a boss. Now, before we go ahead and fight Tubba Blubba and his heart, we have to try fighting some bloopers. The first of which being titled, well, Blooper. Since by now we have damage dodge, the damage we're taking for Mario really isn't that heavy. Only 1 point per turn, while Luigi does 4 damage per turn, and Blooper has only 30 HP max. Basically, Blooper just becomes a weaker Tutten Koopa. So all around, an easy fight against an easy boss. Though this Blooper isn't required to fight. Actually, you'll say for the future, but Electro Bloopers will require Blooper to fight, because that Blooper will send that our way when trying to reach Chapter 7. But that's a ways away from now. Now, as for Top of Blubba's heart, what should I really say about this boss? 50 HP, 6 attack power, unless he chooses to charge up and then it becomes 12, and I'm generally not good at this guard at all. It takes a fairly long time to be able to win this fight. Though by win, I more so mean that the heart becomes a chicken and just starts to run away with its life. Which then leads us to the no longer invincible Tubba Blubba. Though he still hits decently hard, and once again by guarding is absolute dog water, so much so that from 10 HP, I lost a life shroom. But, I never claim to be perfect, and I'm not gonna start holding myself up to that standard. Here lie Chapter 3. So, no doubt you noticed this already, but you can actually see Luigi's score on the right side of the screen. I figured that just watching solo run videos through Paper Mario would get really freaking boring. So for this series, I was curious just how many bosses could be beaten, as well as how all the partners do when stacked up against each other. If you want a legend for future reference, just know that at least 20 points is passing. I'm not the most excitable or enthusiastic YouTuber around, 
But if I could keep your interest just a little bit longer, that would make the world to me. Things didn't go very well for Chapter 4, though. I mean, yeah, there's Anti-Guy, but I don't really care about Anti-Guy right now. We'll talk about this guy later on in Chapter 8 when there's three of them to fight. No, my big problem here was the big Lantern Ghost. I'll be dead straight with you. I wish this fight was impossible, because this is quite possibly the most uncomfortable boss fight in the entire run for me. You might be asking what do I mean by uncomfortable? What I'm trying to say is that I'm really bad at fighting this boss properly. That blinding light flash that he sometimes does to blind my partner in Mario for a few turns is really annoying to guard. Because one, I'm not nearly good enough at this game to guard with both Mario and my partner, and two, if my partner does take damage, Luigi can't attack for two turns, it's as simple as that. And so often, I'm just taking free damage with absolutely zero recourse. And it doesn't help that for some reason, I have an extremely hard time guarding just the freaking ground pound from that Big Lantern Ghost too. Yeah, I don't know why, but I just cannot nail the timing for this attack. And because I had so much trouble, I even had a game over. And yeah, I only had two live streams on me. But the fact that I actually died on this boss, I just feel ashamed. All the same though, Luigi can't win this. His jump hits the lantern twice, which means in one turn, the lantern is actually bright enough to see the big lantern ghost, and Luigi can actually damage him too. I mean, after he's attacked, they'll blow the lantern back out, but what all he matters right now is that Luigi can hurt the boss. This sees this rescue wad, and we're able to fight the next boss, General Guy, now. Though before fighting the big man himself, we have to fight his troops which, to be fair, are not difficult. The Shy Squad of 15 Shy Guys is easy three because of Defend Plus. The Snoop Guys can do decent damage, but they're vulnerable to Quake Hammer, so after two of those, they're basically knocked out. Same for the Shy Stack, but it takes three Quake Hammers to do them all in, not just two. So overall, Luigi does pretty well here, and then we get the General Guy himself. And I use Quick Hammer a couple of times because it's actually my strongest attack against the tank. Like, not only does it do 4 damage to the tank, but also to the light bulb. And that's great because the bolt of lightning from the light bulb can actually disable Luigi for a few turns. But then I run out of FP, and I then realize that Luigi's jump cannot hurt the tank. Because the tank has a defense of 2, and 2 is Luigi's attack power. And just like that, I feel like an idiot. So I had no choice but to run it back, but... Because I also now remember that the defense of the tank existed, I had to invest some more on FP pluses as well to actually win the fight. And for General Guy's army, I had no choice but to just keep using my jump against them all. Meaning 2 turns per Silt Guys, and 3 turns per Shy Stack. Safe to say that because of this, the fight lasted a fair bit longer. But then General Guy himself came up. And fortunately for Luigi, his Quick Hammer is plenty enough to win this fight all by himself. It's honestly no contest. I used up maybe like one life stream, but that was literally it. And overall, Chapter 4 for Luigi was actually pretty decent, even though my performance in this chapter was anything but decent. Fortunately though, survival now is basically a non-issue. I mean, to be fair, it never really was an issue thanks to having live streams available to us in Chapter 3. But through the Peach Intermission, we now have access to Last Stand. Which, in my opinion, in this game, is the defense as power balances to offense. I won't bore you with the details now, there's a whole series of partner-only challenges to demonstrate exactly what I mean. Though if you do want me to further elaborate in the comment section down below, well, ask away. I would love to talk your ear off about this. The way to Chapter 5 is open to us now, but I want to try the dojo first. Lee was, and to an extent, still is a genuine threat. But instead of hitting me with a super jump punch like it did the last time we fought, he just tattled on Mario for a turn. And ignoring that, my guardian was clearly much better. So that's one more for the record books. And since I can, I went to fight Master as well. Though it didn't necessarily go great. Luigi's damage output is currently decent, doing 4 damage per turn, but Master has an attack power of 5, and with damage dodge, I can only reduce the damage by 2. So there was no chance I'd win this. At least, without last stand. And now when I'm in danger, instead of taking 3 damage from guarding, I take 0. Which means Luigi is basically free to just chip away at his HP until he finally goes down. And you know, I'm not the best at Paper Mario 64, so if I can get past the Master Fights without using live streams, I'm personally content with that. Just so I had a heads up though, when we get to the other partners, I really only want to focus on one fight, and that's Master 3. The four fights before that feel like a waste of time to be honest. Okay, Chapter 5. Before we can go there, we have to fight Fuzzipede first. Which for this challenge, I am counting as a boss. And unfortunately, literally only one party can really win this fight, and we're not using her right now. For Luigi, not only can you not fight Fuzzipede when it's dark, 
you can't even encounter Fuzzy Pete when it's dark. So quite literally, the game forces you to use Watt here. Though to her credit, she does a fantastic job here. Which I encourage you to see for yourself later on in this series when Watt's video goes live. Now Chapter 5 has a few boss fights, and a few required enemy fights as well. Starting with the latter, there are these ambushes which Luigi has to defeat to rescue one of the Yoshi kids trapped in the Jade Jungle. They're all grounded and have only 8 HP, so two quick hammers and they're all dead. That much is easy. The next fight, however, is not so easy. There's a fight deep in the Jade Jungle where Luigi must fight three Pusha Piranhas and a White Magikoopa. The reason this fight is notable is because the White Magikoopa can heal its allies for 3 HP at a time for everyone, or 5 HP on a single target. Assuming the absolute worst case scenario happens, Luigi's jump will not work here. Because the instant he does any damage with that jump, the White Magikoopa will heal it off immediately. Fortunately for him though, Quake Hammer does 4 damage, while the White Master Koopa heals 3 HP on everyone in one turn. So provided you have the FP to keep using Quake Hammer, the White Master Koopa and his comrades will all lose 1 HP per turn. And if you're lucky enough that the White Master Koopa attack you in the meantime, well, the fight becomes that much shorter. So a little tough for him, but Luigi could do it all the same. All I have to say is good job. Because this now leads us to getting the Ultra Stone, which can only mean one thing. Luigi can finally be Ultra Rank now, and the move he gets? It's Power Bounce, which to be honest is rather underwhelming. I mean, the attack is a lot stronger having an attack power of 6, but remember who's waiting for us at the end of Chapter 5? You know, the literal being from fire called Lava Piranha? An element that will be actually hazardous to touch? Or to spike Don Jr. Troopa on our way back to Toad Town? Granted, with Lava Piranha, you can also just use Quake Hammer to do damage all the same. But Junior Troopa is straight up airborne, so obviously your jump's not gonna do anything here. And my, what a pity. If only your power bounce was a move that could actually hit spiky and- WHAT?! WHAT THE F- That can't be right. No, rewind the video. What- what's the description for this move? Jump continuously with insulated boots for no contact damage. Unbelievable. Insulated. No contact damage. Luigi can jump on spikes. Well, I guess this fight's possible after all. Though despite this move being power bounce, while I fight Electro Blooper, I have a confession to make. I don't think I can use power bounce very well, because every time I try using this move, the most bounces I can get are only two bounces. I had it happen maybe one time where I got three bounces, but other than that, it's only ever been two. I do believe though I'm just bad at this move because in my Goombario solo video, I demonstrated there I was bad at using Multibonk too. I will complain too much though because all that really matters right now is that Luigi has an option to hit airborne foes with dangerous elements to them. And as I mentioned before, Lava Piranha is no issue for Luigi either. Power Balance just does Luigi so much favor, even though Quick Hammer would work just fine here. And that ends Chapter 5. Also, quick side note, I went to Merlot to pick up Flower Saver. Having more FP will be darn near essential for later on in this challenge. But that won't always be enough, so really having it stretch is also really important. I wanted to be Kenshi Koopa because, as you already know, show, don't tell. But it turns out my level was still so low that I had to level up even more to actually have a chance at winning this. Which means we're not beginning Chapter 6. And the fights here are relatively easy to handle. Monty Moles take either two jumps or three quick hammers to knock out. So Luigi has no real issues here. What I have issues with, however, is fighting a Maisie Daisies. I said I would not complain too much about not being able to power bounce very well, but for these enemies specifically, it really sucks that I don't know how to use this move properly. Because Maisie Daisies get me a lot of star points upon defeat, and Luigi can't do that reliably without being able to use power bounce more than twice per hit. But I did not give up, because by now, I was fully convinced that it was my fault that I was not getting these power bounces off as well as I'd like. And while I was fighting the Lakitus before getting to Rosie, I tried power bounce against one of the Lakitus, and I got a 3 hit attack with a move. Guys, it's happening. I'm actually learning now. And yes, yeah, since the Spindings can be hit by Quake Hammer, y'all already know, this fight is possible for Luigi to do all by himself. But more importantly, with renewed confidence in myself, I start using Luigi's power bounce against the Amazing Daisies here. And with my epic 3 hit combos, I'm actually able to level up really fast if I wanted to. I leveled up from 2 hits to 3 hits. Let's freaking go. But I'm not stopping there, because I know with enough practice, I'll be able to get to the coveted 4 hit combo of Power Bounce. This, my friends, is what you call a character arc. Hmm, Crystal Berries? Now what game does that remind me of? 
But seriously, I'm taking the time to say now that the partner only challenges for Paper Mario 64 will be released every Saturday. At least until the month of December. While you wait, you can check out my series of partner only challenges in Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Or even some Bug Fables videos, which is basically a Paper Mario spiritual successor. The next final note was against Lackluster, who in general is so unnoteworthy that I'm not even sure what else to really say beyond what I just said. It was a chance to practice Power Bounce though, and that's pretty good for me. We're nearing the end of the chapter 6 now, but before we go to the end of this chapter, let's fight some optional bosses first, like Ken C. Koopa. I didn't level up that much, but I leveled up enough to actually have a chance of winning this now. My stats aren't necessarily optimal though, because my defense really isn't that high. So with bad RNG, after two good hits from Ken C. himself by doing his ground pound on Mario, that's a life stream lost. The worst than that is that oftentimes I miss the guard on the power shell he uses against me, and that sees Luigi get stunned for three whole turns. On the bright side, I have 40 FP, it costs 2 to use Quake Hammer, and each use of Quake Hammer does 4 damage, which is just enough to do 80 damage if I absolutely had to. And Ken C has only 70 HP! So the fight itself was definitely hard, but all the same, it was possible. It just took a lot out of me though, because I really struggle with this guard. But yeah. That should have lived from this 4-Eyed Jerkwad. Speaking of 4-Eyed Jerkwads though, we also have this yellow Master Koopa in this required fight for the Hot Puff Machine. And is it me, or does Luigi's jump just have really, really weird timing for when an enemy is really far away and there's enemies in front of them? Because it's not often that my power bounce lasts for only one hit. Worst case though, yeah this fight was a cakewalk. Given the circumstances, I think we did pretty well. But can the same be said for Hot and Puff? Well let's talk about him. Luigi's only methods of hitting Hoffenpuff are using its jump attack or power bounce, and given this fight's gimmick, neither of those two moves really do a lot of damage that lasts. Though knowing Hoffenpuff's AI, it is possible for Luigi to do a lot of damage and then just use power bounce to get a lot of extra hits and that actually will last, because only about 10 tough puffs can exist on screen at a time. I must add also though that the fact that Luigi's power bounce is not affected by the electric status that Hoffenpuff sometimes generates for himself, is really convenient, because it means that we don't have to worry about not being able to attack Hoffenpuff for a turn. And we can do even more damage that once again will get the last for much longer. So really, I'm pleasantly surprised at how well Luigi was able to handle this. Now I could have handled this fight better because I did lose a life stream, but I think Luigi did pretty well for himself. Chapter 6 completed. And now that we're back to sleuthing around this Princess Peach, check this out. While disguised as a Koopa Troll, I talk to this Koopa Troll, he gives me a key. I transform him back into Princess Peach right in front of him, he takes me back to my room, does not at all question the fact that he just gave me the key, and just, he let me keep the freaking key. Yeah, there's attention to detail right there. And now before beginning Chapter 7, I want to try fighting the Super Blooper, which sadly gave me very little to actually talk about. Either I'm using Power Bounce, or I'm using my Jump Attack. Sometimes Super Blooper can do a lot of damage in a single turn using her Charge Attack, but the lowest that got me down to was 5 HP. Which at that point, her babies did absolutely nothing of value. Like, thanks to Last Stand of the Fan Plus, they could not hurt me at all. There is also just one more optional fight I want to look at, and it's Master 3. Yeah, I'm skipping 2 because it's strictly easier. And all I really have to say here is just Power Bounce. Around now, I was even getting 4 bounces. Aside from that, a few latches were exhausted, but yeah, very much possible fight for Luigi to win. And even then, a strictly harder fight than Junior Troop at number 5. This fight lasted, I think, 5 turns, and no life streams were even spent. And safe to say, Monstar is not worth talking about either. No, the worst he did was just keep Mario from grabbing a 20 loss from running away another battle. Beyond that, a 4 hit power bounce, and then guarding his 1 attack on me, and boom, they're done. Nothing of interest really happens until the Crystal Palace, and I'm not talking about the good kind of interesting either. So in case you're wondering, I'm playing Paper Mario 64 on emulator. And the mod I'm using, which was created by someone called Helldoom in the Paper Mario Star Rod Discord server, is not exactly complete. I must preface this though by saying that I much appreciate that this mod exists at all, and I want to personally thank Helldoom for making this mod possible to play. But clearly it's not complete yet. And to Heldum's credit, he knows it's not complete yet too. So hopefully in the future, it will be more stable. But when fighting duplicates, sometimes you can knock him out while it's disguised as Luigi, and it can actually cause the game to crash. I don't really know why it crashes, but it does. My guess is that the game does not know what to do when the duplicate is disguised as Luigi, and it takes damage when it already got knocked out from a previous hit. Because when I tried this fight again, and I didn't attack him again when his HP hit zero, the game kept going just fine. And unfortunately, this isn't the only time this has happened either. I'll speak more on this later when it becomes relevant when we fight the Crystal King. There's also the White Club as a match to Koopas alongside them. Predictably, all of these fights are possible. 
but only the Black Magic Koopa fight was relatively painless, and it was also the first one. With the White Magic Koopa, I have no idea why, but every time I tried to use Power Bounce or even any kind of jump attack against the White Magic Koopa, I would not even get the first input off. Which is really bad because I don't have any flower savers equipped right now, and my FE is going extremely quickly. I really would have been just much better off going for Quick Hammer all the time instead of trying Power Bounce, which I clearly cannot use effectively here. And honestly, Pass me said it best. The timing, I swear, is completely different when they're in the back. But all of this pales in comparison to the fight with the Crystal King. Let's cut to the chase. The problem with this boss fight is that sometimes when Luigi is attacking the Paralusions, the game will crash which is also most of the way through the fight. Safe to say this gives me a lot of cause to be very impatient. It especially sucks because when the Paralusions come out, it's really hard to tell who to target with Luigi. You've got a 1 in 3 chance. At least when they're on the ground, Quick Hammer works just fine. Now, not only can I miss, but I can also lose all progress just because the game feels like it? How the heck is that fair? The only way I can tell that I can actually win this fight and have it actually count is if the attack itself is actually fatal. But prior to that, just in case Power Bounce uses the multi lump formula for how many hits I can get on him, I had to resist using Power Bounce the entire fight up to that point. I also had to trigger the two heals the Crystal King had before I got him to 21 HP left. From there, with him being airborne with only 2 HP left, one more hit from my jump knocked him out, and this time there was no crash. I still don't know for sure why this crash even happens, but all the same, at least we were able to win. And that, my friends, is the 7th Star Spirit. And after some grinding against some amazing daisies in Chapter 6, I dare say we're ready for Chapter 8. As you can imagine, a lot of the fights in Chapter 8 are hard farts. Though fights against Koopa Trolls, Duplicos, and Magic Koopas aren't necessarily hard. At least not when one of your attacks is Quake Hammer. On a good day, you'll win in two hits. And while on the day of recording this, I did have a good day, it actually took me three turns because, as I completely forgot, the Magic Koopa has 11 HP, not just 8. But still, a good day is a good day. Things, however, got pretty hairy when fighting the Anti-Guy unit. Yeah, remember in Chapter 4 when they thought that having you fight only one of these would be a challenge? Imagine being in Chapter 8 then, where you have to fight three all at once. Doesn't sound very pleasant, huh, does it? Well, no matter. With good guarding, and by good I mean I guard literally every attack, Luigi is guaranteed to survive this entire fight. Meanwhile, my game plan was to use Power Bounce against the very first Anti-Guy, doing at least three hits, and then proceed to use Quick Hammer up until the Anti-Guy that's on the far left is within 11 HP of death. After that, I use Power Bounce one last time to finish him off. And for the rest of the fight, all I do is use Power Bounce. Even a bad Power Bounce of two hits does 11 damage to each Anti-Guy, while using Quake Hammer to all two of them instead does only 8 damage total. We end this fight just fine. I mean, we are down a lot of life streams, but that's fine because we can always just withdraw more. The next obstacle is that persistent Junior Troopa. In Phase 1, I had Luigi repeatedly use his jump attack here. This would go on for quite a while, mostly because this phase tends to last the longest, since you have to do more than one third of his max HP to see him transform even once. When he sprouts wings, however, well, this is where Power Balls comes in handy, those insulated boots allow him to actually do damage here. And the phase itself does not last long at all because, well, my boots do so much more damage when I'm using FP. And I did not want to use Power Bounce too early in the fight because I did not want to run out. I mean, yeah, I had that much FP, but my brain works in mysterious ways. The third phase, however, is the most troublesome. What really stinks about the magic form is that in theory, this fight can be a stalemate. At best, my Power Bounce is hit four times which against Junior Troopa would be like 7 damage total. And since it's likely that Power Bounce acts as if Goombario's multi is being used, it caps way before 4 hits, meaning at most, Luigi's doing only 7 damage per turn. And it's sad that I'm saying only here, because Junior Troopa can heal 10 HP in a single turn if he wanted to. Of course, Luigi does eventually win, because remember, this series will not be scientific at all. But I cannot give Luigi full credit, because A, I don't even know if Power Bounce can go beyond 4 hits, and B, in vanilla, the cap for Goombario's multibunk here is just 4 anyway, so I highly doubt that the cap was actually increased for this one boss fight. And now, this leads us to the final boss, Bowser. Because Luigi's power bounce is so strong, I get to show you something that you'll never see in any of my partner-only challenges going forward. 
But if Mario's percentage of HP is like way above Bowser's percentage of HP, Bowser can heal himself once for 20 HP, which in effect undoes a lot of damage that Luigi got on him early in the fight. An unfortunate handicap for sure, but all the same, really impressive that this is even possible for Luigi here. Anyway, on average for 2 FP, Luigi is able to do 3 damage for Power Bounce. Which, don't be fooled, is actually standard for good partners here. And good thing too, because Bowser does not play fair here at all. Under the effects of the Star Rod, his damage output goes up tremendously. For example, his Fire Breath is actually able to 1 at KO Mario from 10 HP. You know, the amount he heals from a life shroom. But he's not always using the Fire Breath. Sometimes use the Shockwave Drain, and if he does do that, then we do have the Guard with Luigi, or else he's out of commission for 3 turns. But even then, we're generally okay if it happens, let's say, once. More than that would be pushing it, but beyond that, I think Luigi will handle this just fine. I also just have to say, it's a very good thing that Power Bounce does damage here. Because both Luigi's standard jump and Quake Hammer do only 4 damage at most, which actually matches Bowser's newfound defense with the Star Rod buffing him. And with one final Power Bounce, Luigi sees into it that Bowser is defeated. But you may be wondering, what about final Bowser? Well, it's around here that Luigi is completely helpless. Bowser always uses the Star Rod to buff himself on turn 2. And once he does, Luigi's attacks do absolutely nothing here at all. This is the fate that all partners must suffer, and Luigi unfortunately is no exception here. Still, this was a very fun challenge to do, and I'm actually really impressed with how far Luigi was able to get by himself. Before we talk about how Luigi did overall in this challenge, I just have to say this right now. Be aware that every partner will get to fight every boss and every required enemy fight in this entire series. The next time we return to Paper Mario 64, we'll be doing this challenge with Lady Bo. And we will have her by our side from the very beginning in the prologue to all the way into Chapter 8. As for who is after her, I'll leave you to guess in the comments down below. And if you get it right, I'll feature your comment in the next Partners Only video. Here's a hint. The partner is male. And now for the critical question, how did Luigi do? Well, Luigi's ending score, if I calculated this correctly, is 28.75, which comes up to a very respectable A tier rank. Now, for the sake of fairness, I'm not going to be measuring up Luigi to the other partners. Those eight all to duke it out amongst themselves instead. But until next time, I love y'all, and I hope to see you next time.